All right, we're going to be covering the 1010 C section, the ARC 1010 today, and we're going to break this up into two different major parts. One is going to be covering assess, uh, assessing the sealed refrigeration system. I got a question for you. Does every system have a valve on it or a port that you can get into? No. No. Okay. That's, that's a good answer. Uh, many do, but many are, are hermetically sealed. When, when, when you say hermetically sealed, that means there's no ports. Okay? If it does have the ports, though, we're going to go through some of those and show how they operate. Now, probably the most common type of fitting or assess fitting out there is a Schrader. A Schrader, and I'm going to pass this around, has a core in it. I'm going to take the part to start off with and pass it around so that you can see how it works. It kind of reminds me of a tire valve. It's not exactly the same, but very close. But uh, don't get in mind that you can go get one of these cores and put it in uh, a refrigeration system and that, that is an automotive core. They're not the same. They're very close but not the same. You can take it apart and see how it goes there. Um, that has to have a piece on the hose to depress it. That little part right beside the hose there is what presses that straight fork and opens it up. If you have your gauge set or your hoses reversed, notice that one doesn't have one. Okay, so if you put this, or you have a hose that goes on the, uh, uh, some of the ball valves, it won't have that little piece in it either. And if you put that on a straighter, you're either not going to open it up or you're going to get a false reading. So many people have been uh, fooled by that one, that's for sure. Ask him how he knows that. <laughs> yes, I know that personally. <laughs> uh, just a little quick reminder about how a gauge works. That's the Bordon tube, and it stretches out and moves some levers and gears in the back. That's what uh, moves the needle around. Okay, I'm passing around one type of, of uh, port that you can get into a system. Uh, Notice this one has a Schrader on it also. Now this is a quick connect line set. Once this is put on, it punctures this. You can't take this nut back off without losing the charge. So you definitely don't want to put it on there, pull it back apart. That's a line set. But you notice the Schrader. The Schrader on this particular one is to the line set. <clears throat> okay. When, uh, when you're working with the system, before you have punched the line, keep that in mind. Okay. It's always best to look at the system closely. Different manufacturers are going to put these valves on in a different location. They're going to have different configurations. So you've got to look at it, visually look at it to see how it operates. Okay, service valves, these are more common in the industrial, commercial, uh, you don't see this much in, 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 in uh, residential systems. Now, the stem is always a question, front seat, back seat, okay? You know, what, what does front seat do? What does back seat do? Front seat means taking the stem all the way in. Now, I always get a question, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Depends on how you're looking at it, okay? So think of this way. Front seat, the stem is all the way in. Back seat, stem is all the way out. Well, what does it do? It moves a seat inside of here. And, it, and if I'm front seat, I've closed the port here. But it's still open between here and this port. If I back seated it, I pulled it out, I've closed this port. It's now open between these two. We're going to run that around for just a moment. I'll be talking a little bit more about the service path. Now, Many of the service valves have what's called a packing gland here. If a person uses a pair of pliers instead of the proper wrench here, they're going to make uh, 
potential leaks because of the scarring of the of the stem itself. When that stem is run in, it's going to run that packing plant. Also, there's caps that should go on here. Those caps help prevent rust and dirt from getting on that stem, which can also run the packing plant. This is just a larger version of the same thing, but you can see how it operates. You know, some people will tell me, well, do I backseat the valve in order to do the charging? Well, I don't know what the valve's going to be, where it's going to be located. Again, you've got to look at the system to see how to use it. Uh, has that little strider made it around yet? Okay, let me get that back up here for just a moment. All right, let's say we come up on a job and we have the strider valve leaking. Well, does that mean that we got to remove all the refrigerant out of it in order to replace that core? The answer is no. There's a tool that I have in my hand here that you can replace that straighter core with, with a charge still in the system. I should have gotten the core just then. There it is. The charge would still be in the system. I have valved it off. Okay. Give me a new core. Put it back in. Attach. Back together. And I can put that new core back in without losing the charge. Now, get all that taken apart. Okay, one thing I want to warn you about the cores. From time to time, you may actually have to do a refrigerant uh, retrofit. I'm not real fond of retrofit, but let's say that you do come upon a time that you have to do a retrofit, like a R12 unit, and you're putting some other refrigerant uh, that's compatible to the job that the R12 did. Change these cores. The reason being, the cores get what's called memory. And memory is like a piece of paper. If you take a piece of paper and you crumble that piece of paper and you let it go, what's it going to do? It's going to try to expand back out to where it was at, right? It's got memory. Well, with the cores, they're going to have a certain amount of memory too. You want to start off with the new rubber parts and all in there. And plus, some of the rubber uh, cores of the past may not be compatible with some of the new refrigerants and, and the uh, uh, oils. All right, one last little part I got right here. This is a, a neat little tool. And I'll pass this around while we're talking about this one. This little tool saves a lot of time because your hose would hook to it on the system. So let's say you're servicing the system. Okay, when you get ready to remove the hose, you pop that right straight out of there, that's a real quick disconnect. Okay? Of course, you can go right back on with it again, but once you pop it off, the core has already seated then you can put that right back together again. And it's just a quick way of getting your hoses off. Now, pass that around again. Sometimes we have to get into those sealed systems to service them. If we have had a leak on it, or a major component has to be removed, this is called a saddle bow or a bill, uh, the bullet piercing bow. I know that the company that makes these is not going to appreciate what I got to say, but they're temporary. They're made out of lead, and as the copper and the metals heat up and cool off, what do they do? They're going to expand and contract, right? This is going to eventually leak. 
I'll pass it around and show you how it is. It's got a piece in the middle that goes down and pierces into the line, allows you to get the refrigerant out or service it for a temporary time. But keep in mind, if you put one of these on a unit and you leave it there, you will be back. <laughs> or somebody will be back. Okay, in order to get the refrigerant out of a system, this is a tool that actually can pierce the line and has the schrader up on the top. This is for removing the refrigerant. Well, why would you want to re remove the refrigerant? Again, if you had a major component to die, you need to replace it. This is the way to do it. Or, if a system is, or an appliance, for example, is to be recycled, you don't want to send it in with the refrigerant. Most uh, salvage yards are not going to take systems with the refrigerant and the oil still in them. So this right here will do that. Give you an opportunity to get it out. Of course, you don't just let it out to the atmosphere, do you? Okay, you got to recover it, which is going to move us into our next part. Any questions about getting into the system? Well, I want to add something to it. Again, y'all heard this before. What needs to be inside of a system? Oil. Oil refrigerant. Anything else? No. No. If we allow air to get in it or dirt, we can have contaminated the system. So how do we keep that from happening? Keep everything clean. Purge your lines before you add refrigerant. Hopefully, when you do find a leak on a system, fix it. Leaks on a system are probably one of the biggest, uh, I'm going to call it a cheater, of uh, the, you know, if you go out here and you pay a lot for a high efficiency system and it's not charged up correctly or if it has a leak in it, that, uh, that owner is losing money. And it's also detrimental to the life of the unit itself. Okay. Yes. Is this kind of like this, or do you got to buy a little tool and weld it down your system? No, it's, 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 it comes as a tool. Okay. That is, uh, and that's one of many different types. They, they okay. do the same thing, but they're not going to look exactly the same. Okay. All right. Let's move on into a little bit about. Some of the uh, refrigerant management and the EPA. Section six.